Hello, and welcome to another Aterotech integration guide. In this video, we'll be setting up and configuring an Aterotech C1 network controller with an Aterotech's Unify Control Panel software and QSE's QSYS designer. For this demonstration, we'll be using an example QSYS project. This application file will be available for download in the video description. Our example application represents a hospitality venue with an Aterotech UNA 6IO wall plate for local audio input and background music interface to a QSC Core 110F and an equipment rack with remote inputs for BGM at the rack location. In our QSYS design, there are four zones within the venue requiring at least one C1 controller per zone. Each C1 will control zone volume, source selection, and mute. Four zones are represented within the design, however, we'll only be setting up the first zone. For the purposes of this example, we'll only be showing the configuration of a single C1 controller within a single zone. Four zones are represented within the design, however we'll only be setting up the first zone. A single touch panel exists in the design for global zone control and system monitoring, and the C1 controllers will be synced with that touch panel system. To begin creating a working menu configuration for the C1, we'll need to open the C1 plugin in Unify Control Panel. Click on the Control tab, then locate the desired C1 from the Control Devices menu, found here, right-click on the device, and select Configure Device. In the event that you receive a menu pop-up error reading, the retrieved menu hash does not match the menu structure, click OK. Under the C1 Control tab, locate the Control Integration block on the right side of the screen. Because we're targeting a QSYS design, first select the QSYS option from the drop-down menu, then select the third bulleted option, Volume, Mute with Menus. Click Apply, and a menu pop-up will appear, notifying us that the action will modify the menu structure. Click Yes. From here, move to the Menu Builder tab. This is where you can set up your menu configuration that will appear on the physical menu screen of the C1. We'll create the first menu option by clicking the arrow next to the main menu option. This will bring up a template for designing what will first appear on the C1 menu structure. Click the plus icon to add a menu item. Rename the menu item by clicking on the default item name. In this instance, our menu item will be titled Source Select. Click the menu option to make this menu item a parent menu. It's important to remember that when configuring the C1's menu structure, we've included two options for classifying each item that is created, menu and action. Selecting the menu option will classify the menu item as a parent menu. That parent menu can then house submenus. The actions option can be selected for menu items that may include basic event triggers, snapshot recall, or source select within QSYS. Each layer of menus can hold up to eight entry items with a maximum of four levels of submenus. For simplicity, we've included a previously configured menu file that we will load to complete the setup. For your specific application, you can configure this menu structure however you see fit. Our example configuration file is available in the video description as well. Now that we've loaded our settings, click the Send to Device option located here. Along the bottom of Unify Control Panel, you will see the notification message reading, Please wait, transferring data. Once the data has been loaded, Unify Control Panel will show that the device is connected. Now that our device has been successfully configured in Unify Control Panel, we'll move over to QSYS Designer for further setup and configuration. We've now opened QSYS Designer and loaded our example project. This example includes a four zone control option where the user can input an Axon C1 to control each zone individually. Typically, one instance of the C1 plugin is used to synchronize up to four C1s in a shared space or zone. If the design requires more than four C1s for a zone, configuring an additional C1 plugin with the same control blocks and router output can be done easily if needed. We'll begin creating a new C1 plugin. The C1 plugin can be found under the configuration menu here under Plugins, Aterotech, Control, Axon C1. Click on the plugin and locate the C1 properties window found in the upper right hand corner of QSYS. Our example problem is set up for a four zone control. However, we are only focusing on the implementation of one C1 device. The router, volume, and output metering blocks highlighted here will all have their own default names within QSYS. These will all need to be renamed in order for the C1 plugin to correctly communicate with the rest of the project. Once the target control blocks in the QSYS design have been given unique names, the C1 plugin can be used to associate these blocks with the target C1 functions. This is not configurable until the project is sent to the core. 
With the core loaded with our example project, we can now choose blocks to control and associate with the C1. First, we'll open our C1 plugin and select which C1 units will be associated to it. The C1 is able to be found either manually by entering the unit's IP address or by discovery, which will show all available C1 devices on the network listed by name. Find the unit IP1 field here and select the desired C1 device. Next, click on the locate button. The status LED in the upper left hand corner will turn yellow, meaning the device is connected. Next, we need to sync the device so that the menu structure created within Unify Control Panel becomes tied to the C1 plugin within QSIS. Once the C1 is synced, the plugin LED will turn green. The plugin should now be populated with all of the events that were created within our menu structure. Within the Source Select section of the plugin, click on the Router drop down menu and select the renamed router within the QSIS design. In this example, our router block has been renamed Router 1. Once the router block has been selected, all of our source select options will become available. Under the zone controls block, we can select any renamed meters and gain control blocks for volume mute controls and to add metering information to the C1 plugin, as well as the light bar on the C1 unit itself. We'll select OP metering 1-1 and volume control 1-1, which is our gain control for volume control, and router 1, which is our source selection. Once we select these items, the rest of the C1 menu in the plugin becomes active. Relate the inputs on the router to the desired source label in the menu. The router output will control the selected output from the router for desired zone control. Now we have successfully completed basic C1 configuration for handling everything within the first zone within QSIS Designer. The final step in our demonstration is to validate that the C1 is performing as configured. If we look at our C1 controller and select the source select option, we can see that the C1 is controlling that specific output. We've gone ahead and opened all of the associated control blocks within Designer to show the associated activity between our physical inputs into the C1 and our control blocks within Designer. The C1 controller has two interface states, volume control mode and menu mode. Moving the C1 encoder knob while in volume control mode is reflected in the gain control block. This activity can also be seen within the QSIS C1 plugin. To mute the main volume control, press the C1 encoder knob. Again, this activity will be mirrored in the QSIS C1 plugin and in the gain control block. Pressing the menu button while in volume mode will take the user to menu mode, bringing up the source selection events that were created in Unify at the beginning of this example. You can navigate through the menu structure using the encoder knob. Pressing the menu button while on a lower level menu will take the user back to the parent menu. Holding the menu button down while in menu mode will take the user back to the volume control mode, displaying the volume bar. The light bar on the Axon C1 relays informational outputs to the user when the device is in menu mode, making a selection in the menu, and also the mute status. When the C1 enters menu mode, the light bar will illuminate a solid white color. In volume control mode, the C1 will illuminate the light bar blue if the device is muted. The light bar will also report metering levels as green, yellow, and red if enabled in the QSIS plugin. This is the basic functionality of the C1 interface and menu structure. Thank you for watching this configuration and setup guide. For further questions and application support, please visit the provided link to create a support ticket.